Episode 2 of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yes, it's time to talk about it. Let's go. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Club CXFM, brought to you by WeAreCritics.com, a place where we talk about movies, television, pop culture, and if you're into that kind of thing, make sure you hit the subscribe key and that notification bell so you can be up to speed about everything that I talk about here. Now, last night uh, was the second episode of Disney Plus, Marvel Studios, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and I gotta tell you, at this point, they did not disappoint, not to me at least. Um, first episode was a little bit slow, uh, but it picked up, it was like, it picked up in the beginning and then it kind of dra dragged out, uh, for the rest of it. And it just pretty much gave you a little bit of backstory, but what's been going on with our two protagonists, uh, Sam Wilson and James Bucky Barnes, uh, the Falcon and Winter Soldier. Uh, so I didn't really hate it that much, but it did leave me like a little underwhelmed, like, you know, coming off that WandaVision hype, uh, we were just kind of just like. Uh, so where's this gonna go? I mean, it's cool and all, but it's definitely different, but it was a little slow. Now, we get the second episode, and I gotta tell you, they gave me everything, they gave me everything that I was, like, uh, hoping for, uh, all the Easter eggs. Uh, we saw about three or four different Captain Americas in this entire episode, and for those of you who do not know, uh, there were tons of name drops, tons of introductions, uh, that that are just stemmed from the comics like straight ripped from the comics uh for example uh the, the the episode starts we see john walker who is in fact the new captain america uh who goes by u.s agent in the comic uh and he's not he, apparently he seems like he's a good dude but there's some twists and turns in the comic but we don't know where they're gonna go uh as far as the series but i'm hoping that it stays true to the source material um Along with his introduction, we see his uh, homie Lamar, uh, uh, Lamar Ho Hos Hos Hoskins, Lamar Hoskins, who is also known as Battlestar, who is also, he's like a sidekick to the new Captain America, who at one point in time went by the name Bucky. Um, yeah, there's a black Bucky in the comics, if you guys didn't know that. They were essentially just trying to replace the, the legacy of Captain America uh, with these new characters and there was John Walker, and then there was Battlestar, uh, a.k.a. Bucky at one point. Um, that was a little weird, but it was cool to see that dynamic. We see with Sam and and, uh, and Bucky, there's a lot of hostility towards one another, but I'm going to guess that that is not at each other, but more or less grieving. It's grief from the loss of their best friend. Like Both of them uh, are holding in this... Uh, tension and i think that it stems from what they're feeling about you know cap just kind of handing the shield off and just dipping and, and, and doing his own thing they kind of both feel like they have a sense of uh where where do they belong now like who are they like what what is their purpose uh the avengers are dismantled at this point there's no big giant things to come together to fight and i don't know they just kind of both seem like they're just looking for reason right now um and that's the thing that I love about what uh, Marvel Studios is doing with this series is that, yeah, it's a superhero show, but it's so grounded. And, and I know I say this a lot, but, you know, it's taking them from this massive world of aliens and monsters and, 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 and things like that. And then putting it uh, in this grounded world of what happens when all that is, you know, in the background. And then you have to come back to, to the reality of life and... I think these two are balancing that really well. They're, they're feeding off one another and blaming one another. And, and Bucky makes a great point. Like, he's pissed off at Sam because, you know, their best friend believed in him, gave him the shield, and he turned it down. And, you know, now the shield is in the hands of someone else. You know, if, if anybody should have had that shield, it should have definitely been one of the Avengers who understood the journey in which it came from. And, you know, they were all there. And,. Uh, and, and I get where Bucky's coming from. But on the other hand, I think I know where Sam is going with this. And he says something that really stuck with me. And he says that's something that him and Steve would never understand. And I think that Marvel is going to lead towards uh, civil rights and, and blacks in America and things of that nature. Because there's a, there's a, a, a saying that Sam says in the trailer that we haven't heard yet. But when he was like, the legacy of that shield is complicated. And, I mean, he, he couldn't have been more right. 
like yes a lot of us look up to captain america as a, as a righteous superhero uh we champion him in the comic world but in the reality of things you know championing america and you know its history with us as black people i think is playing in sam's head i think that's what's kind of you know it's not just him living up to the hype or living up to being another steve rogers or being that it's him being a symbol for a country that he feels doesn't really have his back um and and i i feel that and especially with that scene when the cops come in and and, and, and kind of like give them shit and then once they realized who he was oh then everything was all good but in the beginning they were kind of coming down on him because they, they thought that he was troubling Bucky and even Bucky had to step in and say something like, and then they were all calm and collective when they found out that Bucky had a warrant. Like this guy's a, a known assassin to the world who was pardoned by the, by the, by the, by the, 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 the government. And, and he's out and about chilling and they were like all calm and apologetic and saying that they got a you know he was he violated probation and they were willing to just put the handcuffs on him and put him in the car but they got all hostile with with sam and before they even knew who he was so i get where sam is going and i think that's the direction that marvel's going to go in um more nods to the comic uh, isaiah bradley Ugh, guys like that's the black captain america for those of you who do not know uh there's a comic out there called truth um which is a story about Isaiah Bradley who took the super serum years ago and nobody knew about it. So when Sam was surprised and kind of pissed off that you tell me there was a black Captain America or a black super serum, a super soldier that no one knew about. And, and, and Bucky's like, yeah, Bucky was the only one that knew. But yes, there was indeed true a black Captain America in the comic books back in the day. Not as far back as, you know, uh, as uh, Steve, but back in the day. Um, and yeah, I think that was cool. And then there was a kid who opened the door who I, I pretty sure, I think we'll get more of him. I'm pretty sure that he's Elijah, Elijah Bradley, who is Patriot, who is uh, the leader of the Young Avengers. So all the Young Avengers are falling into place, guys. Like we got Wicked and Speed and WandaVision. Now we got uh, Elijah Bradley, who's the grandson of Isaiah Bradley. Uh, we got Ca uh, Cassie Lang, who's going to be in Ant-Man and the Wasp 3. Uh, we have... Kate Bishop, who's going to be in the Hawkeye series, like all the Young Avengers are being set up, guys. And if you don't see it, then you are blind because I knew this from Jump that they were going to do the Young Avengers in some capacity. I hope that we get them either in a series or the next Avengers movie. Something's going to happen to like all the OG Avengers and these young young bucks are going to have to step up and save the day. And I think that that's what's going to happen, y'all. Um, Flag Smashers, dude, those guys are badass. Um. They, I like what they're going with this because they're 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 taking the the events of the blip and not letting us forget about that. Like there are freedom fighters out there or anti-terrorists or terrorists. We don't know what they are, but they believe in the way things were when the world was fifty percent less. So they're kind of like Thanos enthusiasts, I think. Um, and <clears throat> their position is still unknown. They're, they're badasses, they're smuggling things, they're moving things, but we don't know exactly what. Um, I'm leading towards that they may have stolen some super serum stuff, uh, possibly, <coughs> excuse me, possibly uh, super serums that they're taking that they may have gotten from the Power Broker. Uh, the Power Broker is another comic character who um, is out there distributing this uh, super serum to people, uh, and I think that that's possibly where they got their powers from. But we don't know yet. Still questions. Still things unknown. But I don't want to drag this out, guys. I want to know what you guys thought about this episode. Uh, there was a, a good bit of action, a great bit of uh, Easter eggs, uh, great introductions and name drops, and enough stuff to get us drooling. And then at the end, we get where they're going next. They need to know more about Isaiah Bradley and Super Serum and how everybody's getting access to it. And the only people that would know would be people from Hydra. And now they're on their way to go see the man, Baron Zemo, who I believe is going to be my new favorite MCU villain. Uh, I know a lot of people out there love Loki, um, but to me, he's not really a villain to me right now. He's like playing both sides of the cards. Um, and... You know, he's just he's just Loki. You know, he's got a mischief, and sometimes he's good, sometimes he's bad. But Zemo, 
man, that dude's had it out for these guys since day one, and I cannot wait to see him in his iconic costume from the comic. Uh, I'm excited to see Zemo and his his mannerisms and what he's going to bring to the table. So, guys, let me know what you thought about Falcon and Winter Soldier Episode 2. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Uh, what do you speculate? What do you think is going to happen? Am I right? Am I on? Am I off? Let's talk about it. Uh, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And for more news, television news, my podcast, Critics Talk, make sure you guys check out wearecritics.com, and I'll talk to you all later. Peace.